Welcome everyone to another week of Challenger League. On the night in birth, it's group stage week five out of seven. So just three more weeks remaining, including today. Mm -hmm. And I'm your host, Sinjul, with me. Well, for the first game is Voa. Hi, Voa. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's so, lovely to be here again, uh, shortly before my next match, in fact. Yeah, yeah. we're going to see you. We're going to see you later. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. So uh, mm -hmm. everyone will just hear my beautiful voice for that game. And, You'll uh, get to call me a bully again, hopefully. Oh, I did. Did you see the tweet? Did you see the tweet? I did see the tweet. <laughs> the the Irish butter, Irish butter churner. But it's tasty. That's where Kerrygold is made. It's all good. Yeah. It's all tasty. But yeah, yeah, this is like you said, the fifth week. We're coming to coming to the end of it, over the halfway point. Uh, but still, lots left to play for for all the people here in the standings. Exactly. So let's just have a quick look before we go into the first match, which is uh, Glorican versus Captain Atom. We're going to look at that in a moment. So right now, well, four players will advance from the group stage and we have currently Sad Stork leading, leading the group with four wins and two losses. Then Lionheart with uh, one loss left, uh, le less. Uh, so one more game to go for, for him. Um, then you are currently third place with the well, pretty much the same score, uh, win loss ratio as set, so but less points, so you won less less matches. And then we got well, probably the favorite of the tournament, Glodikin in fourth place, but with a perfect score, still quite a lot of games remaining for, for him and. Yeah, Lamona, Lamona chasing, chasing the top four with a three-one uh, score at the moment. So it's still it's still a possibility. Lama also two to one uh, for Luna Nova and Rufflecop. That's gonna be pretty difficult with the two to four and one to four score. So yeah, we it, this can still. This can still change. This can still change within the next three weeks. Top four go through to the first to ten single elimination playoffs. And uh, yeah, with that said, let's have a let's have a quick look at our first matchup of the day, which is Glodikin versus Captain Atom. It's Usury Ha versus Nanase. Uh, Boa, what what do you think? Who Who will take this? Like, how's the character matchup? Uh, I think what we're looking at here isn't just the character matchup uh, so much as we are looking at the the player style and player matchup. Uh, because we've seen this matchup before. We saw uh, Roy versus Glodokan in week one, for those of you who were with us then, uh, which was the same matchup. It was Yuzuria versus Nanase. And what we saw a lot in that matchup was the fact that it's really difficult For Nana said to exploit her, her pressure correctly against Usuria because of Usuria's 4B, because of Usuria's ability to escape the corner pressure, and because of Glodokan's specific ability to maintain uh, their temperament under pressure and to resist the urge to push a button against, like, really staggered Nanase pressure. The second that they can get opened up, though, uh, Glodokan really exploits that and goes ham on them. So I think that we might be seeing... Uh, Glada can take this one. I'm still rooting for Captain Adam. Uh, they're still a very good player, and I think that if they can approach this matchup on, in a non-orthodox manner, they might have a very good chance to put some points on the board here, uh, get themselves up in the rankings. Uh, that being said, Glada can is the favorite. I'm still going to lean slightly harder on their Usuria right now. Yeah, I agree. I mean, just going by the results uh, from the previous seasons, uh, Glodikan is is up there. Um, he also performed pretty well in the ESL online tournaments, always top three, uh, where all the, the top tier Undernight players uh, still joined, like uh, Cello, we had... Um, oh, who was it? <laughs> the... The Enkidu player, man. Ah, oh, the UK Enkidu player, damn. Mostly. Who's our current champion? <laughs> Let me. 
It was Molson. That's who you're thinking yeah, of. Yeah, it's Molson. Oh, it's Oops. Molson. How can I forget? Damn. Because sometimes names just go through your head. You know how it is. Like, in one in one side of the head and you're like, ah, oh, I don't remember that. And then just... Gone. Yeah, for though. me, like today... Guys, I'm so sorry, but I only I only slept three and a half hours. Like I'm totally baked. If you, if you have ever seen a baked potato, I'm I'm even more baked. <laughs> well, it is that way sometimes. All right, uh, we're just waiting on the players to actually hit start on the matchup now. <laughs> I am um, I'm curious as to what the round start opening is going to be here. I predict that we're going to see a lot of changes as the uh, match goes on. We're going to see a lot of adjustment based off the both of them. Uh, I think Glodekin's going to take it easy the first couple of rounds, feel out what Captain Adam wants to do on their openers, and once they have a good idea of what their opening's going to be, we're going to see a lot of uh, jump teleport and uh, potentially jump movement. I think we just went random there. Yes. Random this could switch. lead to a quick uh, character select reselect after this. So let's let, or unless if they're both just happy to play it out. Alright. So round one. This is where we're going to see the opening of their yeah. Well, the kid's not even waiting to see what uh, Captain Man was going to do. Jump and sweep, making sure that uh, sorry, jump and hard slash to make sure they can see everything going on. Oh, like what you did here. And. Good OTG and very good corner carry going on here. It's a lot of him getting Captain Adam exactly where he wants him. Oh, we get a huge damage combo here. This is possibly gonna kill? Oh, no, I'm a liar. Oh, Captain Adam is like pushing buttons where he really shouldn't be. Like, Claudican is exploiting everything that he can against Captain Adam here. Really good adjustment there to just backdash it around start and get some more space in this matchup. It's definitely a good skill to have in Undernight, to not mm -hmm. press buttons. I know it can be very difficult if you're used to playing other games, but in Undernight, on Wake Up, usually you want to block. You don't want to DP, just, just don't press anything. I mean, I'm just looking at it all the time, but, uh, just, just a random use of meeting up from Godokun? Alright, unless that was some weirdo mess that got, uh, eaten by input. Go throw attack, and now we're back into the CS advantage. Got a, ooh, push the corner carry. There's part of me that's wondering if we're gonna see the 12 back to character select to, uh, reselect stage after this. But Godokun takes it fairly handily in round, in, uh, game one, with the first point on the board. Yep. No, nope, just doubling, just doubling back in on the retry, ready to just play this game out. A couple of a uh, couple of extra points of lag doesn't mean a damn thing to him. Well, every frame counts, you know. The more it lags, oh, yeah. the the more advantage you got. You just have to press a lot of minus stuff. And, you the more know, stuff you the, are. If the delay is like five frames, and you you lose minus five, it's unpunishable. That was a really good use of 5A to punish the Sword Car, uh, Sword Car into Overhead. Ooh, and then we're seeing the dash. Ooh, very good dash throw! Like, just waiting for that shield to try and escape pressure. Well, kind of adjusting after round 1 to know that uh, Captain Adam really likes to use shield to try and dodge out of pressure. I got hit by that overhead, I don't know about you. I definitely was hit, yeah. And I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> There's here's the stance splashes. You really want to approach Gladikin very carefully. If you're not using 6AD4 um, or 6AD1, you are going to get hit. Like, any forward movement is getting picked up by the stances. Another DP on wake up. This is part of me wondering if Gladikin is like mistiming some uh, specific anti reversal OS or if this is just like. Being like, oh, who's gonna hit a raw Nana say DP on their wake up for the third time in a row? Yeah, you know, sometimes you just have to, you, still, you just have to challenge. Uh, you need to be unpredictable. If you always do the same thing, if you always block, you know, if you show too much mm -hmm. respect, it's also bad. Yep, so if, you, if you spend every single game blocking on your wake up, they're gonna punish you for that. If you spend every single time being a bara on your wake up, they're gonna punish you for it. You have to know when to pick the time to do what you're gonna do to it. Uh, to draw an analogy to uh, Guilty Gear Strive, not every person is an amazing tech. 
Not every person can want to do Kara Pop Buster uh, round start, but at some point in a long set, you're going to see it at least once. Because it's a free, it's a free steal on them once they respect you. Why would you I feel not like do can... that? Hmm? Why would right? you not do that? I mean, it's round start Kara Pop Buster. You gotta do it. Because it loses to Soul F H, or sorry, Soul Far S, and it, if they hit a five five frame button, you just get eight mil fight for it. Uh, we're seeing, oof, really good, really good round from Glodokan there. Like, taking their time, finding their space, not overcommitting to anything. The patience on Glodokan is really something else. Like, their ability to just pick and choose their moments is so good. Ooh, tech again. Ken Adam is on point with these techs. I don't know if they just mash me throw or something, or if they just have the presence of mind to be like, ha, ah, it is time to tech the grass. Probably used to it uh, from playing Street Fighter V. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of green shields coming out here, which is one of the reasons that uh, I imagine that he's got such a high advantage right now. Ooh, actually, no, he's losing a lot of advantage stuff that I'm telling a lie, but he is shielding a lot of these other hits. A lot of him punishing the shield, really good uh, awareness there of the situation. Ooh, I didn't pick that up. Oh, this really good combo off that as well, and we might see... Yeah, it's gonna be soft knockdown into the corner. Really tricky over, uh, follow up off the overhead there. And that's game three. Got a good speed running these rounds. Uh, it was it was just your regular random counter hit pickup. Yeah, I'll take those 4K. I take that. The thing that gets me is that it wasn't just a random counter hit pickup. It was a traded counter hit pickup. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Was Yes, so they traded uh, against an A button with a C button, the counter hit was immense. I probably only got that pick up to trust it, potentially. Unless we did the 5A after. So we're back in the corner again. Yeah, good round start for Glodikin again. Just pushing Captain Atom back to the corner. Mm -hmm. And already down. My god, these, these rounds, they just fly by. Yep. Even though there's like 30 seconds gone on the clock, it feels like it's much quicker because we're seeing that it can do so much. Uh, I also, ooh, very nice, uh, does right there. Uh, I also want to point out a specific thing that we saw that can do. Uh, the on Captain Adam's wake up was the use of 4B to deal with the fact that Captain Adam has been really GP happy. Unfortunately, not seeing it there, but. You just wanted to explain it? No, he failed that <laughs> one time. Exactly, exactly. It would have been really good if we'd seen it live and in action. Making oh. yourself safe, going into stance, picking up a full combo up this, I think. Yep. This is gonna be the round, I think, yep. Yeah. And that's the game four. Really, yeah, really putting the pedal to the metal here. Uh, Glodokan heard that you had to had to run immediately after the stream and was like, "Don't worry, fam, I got you." I'm gonna speed run this. Give me, give me five minutes. Five minutes <laughs> first to seven. Which character would be the best for speed running this game? Which uh, one I actually kind of want to say like Wolfkin because his damage off any hit. Is is really big and you just have to constantly reset people if you're doing that, otherwise it's probably Anki Doom. Mm. Yeah. I, was, I was wondering, like, what Steam has pretty long animations on the grabs, so it's like... Mm, oh, you don't use the grabs, you do like fully charged e class combos and they do insane damage. Here, also 4.3k off that hit. Another rep nicely packed up in the mm -hmm. present. Yes. I don't know that. So I've been breaking out all the tricky stuff here. A right, nice cross under as well into a full pick up here. Oh! Unfortunately, cross under. Really want to do. Yep. It was a cross under, yeah. They ran directly under them as Captain Adam was hacking. Good, uh, good use of CS to make themselves safe on the offense. Throw them back in the corner. No window for here, unfortunately. Yeah, this could clipped. well be it. No, that... Oh, technically, no, but also, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, the combo dropped, but we picked it up again. Listen, if they don't text the combo, it's a real combo. That's how it just... 
It's not on me to make sure that I hit my combo, it's on you to make sure you check my fake combo. Mash all the buttons. Mash all the buttons so you always take. Thankfully, uh, Under Night lets you hold the button, which I'm very, very thankful for, because the amount of times I get counter hit in Guilty Gear is uncountable. Not in Strike, yeah. thankfully. But then you become predictable, because you will always tech on the first frame. So you have mm -hmm. to... You need the... I fucked up the timing to press the button correctly. Uh, tech windows as well. That's actually that's that's Mind game. Yo, me level. Speaking of, uh, Gorgon is going in on this. No? I think Gorgon has been hit by every single wake up DK that Captain Adam has done. Except maybe one. I want to say one of them got blocked. Or two seed. And that's been it. Like... Don't ever discount the wake up DP. It's always an option. As long as you have an invincible move to wake up with. Yeah, Someone's gonna get hit by it. I guess Glodekin just doesn't really care about the the damage, so it's like just a reset, but he'd, he'd rather stay in stance and uh, use that. He'd rather find the opening. Oh, by the way. He'd rather find the opening that you're going to give him by missing the DP or anything else. Oh. I think that's that's game six. Yep. The full speed run here. On his way to make sure that he's got that top spot in the tournament. Going in, he did number one in the bracket. Yeah, I bet I bet the the Surströming is ready for Glodiken. Like he's just waiting to eat that. Dinner is ready. Got that that tasty. Swedish so streaming. Everyone lost that. <laughs> that's that fish that spends uh, seven months on the ground, right? Yeah, it's a super disgusting, stinky fish. <laughs> <laughs> There's another wake up DP. Wow, man, I'm wondering what the super cut of the amount of times I got has been hit by wake up DP in the set has been. If I were Captain Atom, I would just spam DP because it seems to work. So. Yep. It's hard to open a lot of them with anything else. He's high low as I say. As I say, he's a terror hit. It's just the way it is. Now we're already on match point here. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can just one more round. All you need to do is close out a couple more combos, and that'll be the end of uh, of the end of this series of games. Just using stance here, trying to move around in it, make sure he's getting the wall bounces off. And uh, ensuring he gets the CS because he wants a stylish finish. Don't imagine this time will do it, but the next touch he gets will probably do it with the CS lead. There's the wake up, wake up EXDP. Oh. He ends of the slashes. One more chance. One more hit. Are you, I predict. I predict we're gonna see run up throw here. Oh, the, <laughs> the parry. Yeah, why not? Why not? Oh, taste. Well done to uh, well done to both players there. Uh, Captain Adam putting up a spirited fight there, but can showing why he's the favorite in the tournament currently. Yeah, going up against Glodikin, he's a super scary opponent, and I I gotta say I'm super happy that I that I play Hilda, and I don't have to get close to Usuriha. I have some. I don't have to engage with this woman. She stays over there, and I stay over here. Yeah, exactly. I just want to like, yeah, no. Okay. No, don't, don't, don't come. Don't come near me. Women that ha come at me with unbuttoned pants are very suspect. Oh, Gotta oh. say, like, <laughs> just button up your pants. Then we can talk. <laughs> okay. I need to take a quick break before my match. Uh, I'll let you handle the promotion to uh, Macherino and our other sponsors. Well, we have the Macherino for Undernight, but uh, yeah, we have some more stuff to, to share with you. So uh, I'll just go through that real quick. So as Boa mentioned, we have the Macherino going on with stretch goals. Right now, I think this is th this is not the current amount. Just for your information, it's not the current total amount. I have not updated this graphic yet, but uh, we have reached the season end raffle. So for every five dollars you donate, 
Uh, you get one raffle ticket. So if you donate 50 euro, uh, $50, you get 10 tickets. And we are going to raffle away some prizes, games and music at the end of the season. Uh, for every $15 donated total, we add a new a new prize. And uh, yeah, the next stretch goal is the Melty Blood type Lumina release marathon. So if you're looking forward to that game, if you're playing Under Night, and you might, you might uh, looking forward to to this new French bread game, then uh, yeah, maybe you should uh, you should donate to to the prize pool. So uh, we're gonna hit that one. And also for everyone that may like to play Tekken, we have a three on three tournament this Sunday at 7 p.m. Central European Central European Standard Time. So yeah, it's uh, like last weekend we had the Guilty Gear three on three team tournament. It was super fun. It was it was super fun if you're looking for players. Uh, we have some people looking looking for players for sure. Uh, you can just ping the the Tekken role on our Discord. I'm just gonna uh, post the Discord link and uh, yeah, free free to join. We got the match arena for that as well. Um, so we got some prize pool. Winner team will take home everything. And yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. If I mean, if you like the show, if you like the show, don't forget to uh, follow us here on Twitch. Or you can also subscribe if you have Amazon Prime left and you're like, eh, I don't know what to do with the Prime sub. Then uh, feel free to use it on our on our channel. We're gonna use it to buy hardware, hardware for offline tournaments, which hopefully don't get cancelled. Could. Because Corona numbers are rising again. Yeah. Good. Let's 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 keep those numbers low and do our best to keep praying that uh, when it comes time, everyone can come back to their offline and everyone can get salty in person and not just online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like Celtic Throwdown was like the registration was paused. So ah, mm. in Germany yeah, numbers government. are rising as well. Like, our government has been dragging their feet the entire time. It's really difficult to get a straight answer out of them. We can't afford to do something that is honestly illegal to do, so we can't really keep promoting Celtic Throwdown as it stands. But we are hopeful. Like, there's been a huge uptake in the vaccine from the Irish crew, and there's been a huge uptake in Ireland for that. I think our numbers, our lowest total percentage vaccined are like... 12 to 18 year olds and that number is still at like 65 percent or something yeah uh, in um, germany uh, these like uh, yeah, teens are not even allowed to or like they can they can get a vaccine but so far it was not recommended but i think they are changing it now